Hey YouTube, welcome back. We are Index Music. Today we're going to continue our series on tonal harmony fundamentals. And what we want to do today is basically sort of uh, give you some real world examples that sort of encapsulate a lot of the topics we've been talking about to this point, like the inversions and some secondary dominance and all that, and show you some like real world applications. So if you see it in some maybe some analysis, this will help you learn how to do that. Or uh, if you want to compose something, this is going to kind of give you an idea of how to contextualize uh, some of the chords that we've been talking about and some of the concepts we've done at this point. All right, so what we're going to do is start with something uh, a, little, a little more simple, just like a one, three, five, one progression. And we'll, we'll even do it in C. So we got. So that gives you sort of like a contemporary sort of uh, perspective of what that chord progression would sound like. Where is it in our map, right? So you'll notice there is no three chord. In the key of C, our three chord is E minor. And so what we're going to have to do is just kind of go up one node right there uh, to see where the three chord is, where it says three and deceptive. This, this iteration of the map shows you where the three chord is and the deceptive cadence that we talked about uh, earlier. Um, so here it is, in this kind of weird like no man's land in between the tonic region and the dominant region. And the reason being is because it has traits of, of both. E minor in our key has the third and the fifth of the tonic chord. Right? It also has a seventh of the major seven. So I guess it depends on your perspective of if you're looking at jazz voicings or just traditional triads. But anyways, it also has the root and the third of the, of the five chord. So this three chord functions as a really good way uh, to kind of meander back and forth between those two regions. You know, I can go from here there, to there and right back again by way of same chord, right? So if I plug in our chord progression, let's also switch over to the diatonic um, view of the map or the functional view of the map. This is a strictly diatonic chord progression. All the chords in here are related to the C scale, the key that, the key that we're in, right? So none of this is um, atonal or modal or anything like that. It's very straightforward. So let's go with, what do we say? Three, right? Five. To one. So we're left with that progression I played earlier. All right? And if you want to hear the chords in jazz voicings, hit the jazz button. Mapping Tone Harmony Pro adds all the tension tones for you. All right? So don't forget that feature because it's always there and it's a really cool thing to do if, if jazz is your thing and you don't want to go as contemporary as the example I just played for you right there. All right, so let's, let's look at another example, um, one that uses the inversions that we talked about uh, earlier in the series. Um, actually, this next example and the two after it are all directly plucked from, if you're at all familiar with Casca, uh, the book on tonal harmony. If you've taken, I don't know, certain theory, theory courses like to supplement their material with that book. So just keep in mind that a lot of these examples that we're using are plucked straight out of this book and do therefore have like a real, real world application for that reason alone. Um, if you're asked to analyze something or replicate something, which the Costco book does a lot, this sort of stuff that we're doing now is really useful. And mapping Tonal Harmony Pro is really useful also for that reason. So what we're going to do now is this one, uh, two, six, five, five, seven, one progression. We can actually uh, go back to the basic diatonic view of the map, the map in its most simple form, and, and do this chord progression. All right, so the two, Six, five, there we go. So I want to go in first inversion. I click on the triangle T to get the third as the bass note. And I swipe. Our five chord will be in root position. I'm going to borrow from the minor interior of the circle so that I can get that dominant seven chord. And go back to one. So there's our progression. Um, it's viewed functionally on the map, but if you notice up top, we have the names of the chords quite explicitly expressed, C, D minor 7 over F, G7, and C. And if you want to see them within the map, just hit the function button, and now you can see the chords there, too. Um, keep in mind, though, that D minor 7 is not going to be indicated 
as a D minor 7 over F. Within the map, it only really shows up there up top. And also, don't forget with Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro, you can see the chord scale from where each chord is born, uh, so to speak, by clicking on the S right there underneath. So you see the Ionian is the source of the one chord, and the Dorian is the source of the two chord. And uh, this is going to come in handy, uh, especially later on. So I just want to remind you guys of where that feature is and how to access it. So in the original example out of the Casca book, uh, this progression was actually in the key of B flat. So if I want to know what those chords would be, all I have to do is change keys by clicking on the B flat that is in that keyboard down there. And now my chord names have completely changed while the functions remain the same. Okay, so let's take a look at our next progression. It is a one, uh, five, four, two of five, five, six chord progression, all right? So if that sounds like a mouthful or it sort of doesn't make sense, um, we'll get it all straightened out for you real quick. But remember, a lot of these numbers from earlier in the series have to do with inversions. So what this progression sort of encapsulates are the inversions that we've already talked about and the use of secondary dominant chords. This chord progression is actually straight out of a Beethoven sonata, uh, the Wallstein sonata, the very first movement. So if you've ever heard that piece, this chord progression is exactly that, all right? We're gonna plug, plug it in like this. Our one chord's already there. It always is. And then to get to the five of five, we need to change views of the map. Um, that is a secondary dominant chord. Like I said, uh, we have other videos on all the concepts we're talking about right now. So if this isn't exactly clear to you, uh, check those out and then come on back to this. So like we talked about before, any third inversion chord uh, where the seventh is the base requires us to, let's go back to the functional view real quick, requires us to look at uh, the heptagon right down here, that seven pointed figure indicating that the seventh is the base, right? The five point figure indicating that the fifth is the base and so on, right? So let's do that. Let's get that highlighted and swipe. So C7 over B flat, all right? And then we're gonna go to a five, six chord, a five chord in first inversion. Let's go to that there. There's our five chord. There's our first inversion. Boom. So boom. So what this has done is created a really cool line in the bass. And there's all sorts of indicators in Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro showing you that this is going on, right? So if I start on my one chord, uh, what happens when I go to the next chord is this anchor indication has lit up, letting me know that the bass has stayed static, that it hasn't moved. And then when I go to the next inversion, it steps down, all right? So like we said again and again, that sort of movement in the bass stepping up, uh, stepping down, or creating a pedal, a pedal point, or moving up a fifth or down a fourth. Fifths and fourths, stepwise movement, pedal points, these are all common uh, uses of good fluid uh, bass lines. So these inversions that Beethoven used are one of the reasons why this sounds as good as it does, uh, because it creates this really cool line in the bass. And like we've talked about before, uh, starting, starting to think about like harmony as a consequence of melody or lines, something that stems all the way back to the Middle Ages, carried into the Renaissance. Now you can kind of see uh, Beethoven still doing it um, in his present day. And now this bass line. All right, the only thing wrong with that is that it's not in that key. Beethoven wrote it in C. So like we did before, let's just merely transpose it by hitting a button. Not much changed. All right, the only thing that did is the names of the chords way up top. You see the map didn't really do anything differently. Uh, the Roman numerals underneath the chords at the top didn't change. Because once again, we're hammering home this point that uh, harmony within the map uh, is viewed functionally. Like every chord has a purpose, has a geographical position, and a center, ultimately, the key that you're in, right? So this is the real chord progression uh, that Beethoven would have written or did write for this song. Uh, the example I played earlier um, in the video is exactly that too. So just as a, like, a fun fact and aside, uh, coincidentally we were in B flat from the last example, but what, what actually happens in the repetition uh, of this piece is he says the same exact thing 
in B flat. So you basically just get uh, a new target, the four chord, and he does that by way of just kind of moving everything down and using the same progression and the same movement to target the four chord. Like always, keep the comments, questions, suggestions coming. Uh, we really appreciate the feedback. We do everything we can to get back to you as soon as we can, as succinctly as we can, and make our products as easy to use as possible. And to overall just make your musical experience and knowledge uh, that much better and more enriching. So we really appreciate uh, you guys coming back. Click on the like or subscribe button if you feel like it. Thanks for watching.